Atheist Nomads, episode 136, news for March 3, 2016. The podcast you're about to listen to includes cursing and talking about hoo-hahs. Please be advised. We are the Atheist Nomads, bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin. Joining me as always is Wesley. Hello, everybody. And joining us today is my lovely wife, Lauren. Hi, everyone. So how's everybody doing? Oh, not too bad. I can go into great detail, but I won't. Just know I'm switching meds. So, you know, Yay. sometimes I'm here, sometimes I'm not. Yeah, yeah. We're recording on Wednesday. Our, our normal recording night is Tuesday. Um, that is explained by Lauren's med switch. So, yeah. I'm like, no, let's snuggle on the couch instead. And then Seattle's like, what's up, Power? You don't get any. And then, yeah. <laughs> We had a Tuesday night off. It was really nice. We watched Smallville. Oh. And Agent Carter. I've heard good things. Nerded I've... it up. Agent Carter is very good. Yeah? Okay. Smallsville, Smallville is it's season one, so I'm struggling through, but it's all right. Yeah. Yeah, and I've been uh, doing some behind-the-scenes videos. Uh, I started a, a YouTube channel, uh, Revive the DW Nomad blog, and uh, having some fun playing around with that. Uh, I've got a few videos up so far. Uh, two of interest to our listeners, potentially, are a studio tour and behind-the-scenes look at my editing process. And got some feedback on the studio tour that we will be getting to later. Aw, yay, mm. feedback. Yes, I, I talked about something that I wanted and why, and someone was like, okay, how much will that cost? Let's make that happen. Yay! And listeners, you have a part to play in that. So we will be talking about <laughs> the matching offer here uh, in the, 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 the feedback and supporter section. But yeah, the links to those videos are in the show notes. And uh, if you subscribe to the channel, uh, there'll be random techie uh, stuff, audio, a lot of audio production stuff. And uh, this summer, it'll either be on that channel or a different channel. I'll hopefully be doing some adventure videos as we adventure mm. around Idaho. And Oregon. And mm-hmm. Washington. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe Montana. Depending on, on how much money we have to buy diesel. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I'll get 40 miles per gallon uh, adventuring. Better not adventuring than adventuring. But uh, that, that still costs money. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So let's go ahead and move into dusting off the degree. All right. Last time we covered how the pre-exilic Yahweh was converted into the one true God, trademark, and the (laughs) adversary, or Satan. So yes, there was many gods, they picked one, and they split that god into two. Christians then, of course, split more. But uh, before we get to that, uh, you know, the Old Testament, uh, excuse me, the Old Testament doesn't give much detail on this Satan character. And most of the time, the real adversaries were simply human kings, governors, and generals. In the New Testament, everything is different. Satan tempted Jesus with the power to turn rocks into bread, transport him to other locations, and show him the whole world. Like, literally, the story says that Satan showed him the entire earth. Mm. Well, it was flat at that point, right? So, easy peasy. Unless you talk to a Greek... Or Egyptian. No, 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 no. We're not, we're ignoring those guys. <laughs> and, okay, so then, um, wow, I, that, that, okay, um, <laughs> Satan is the, the constant enemy tempting otherwise good humans to sin. He's always trying to spoil God's plan all the way through. And by the time you get to Revelation, he's manipulating world events and has dominion over all that is not godly. Since then, Christians have been blaming Satan for their faults and their failings. They accuse their opponents of being agents of Satan. They burn witches, 
for having Congress with the devil. Congress means sex. (laughs) Mental illnesses and epilepsy are all easily explained away as demon possession. And there's even a debate within parts of conservative Christianity about what powers Satan has. Can he hear your thoughts or is he limited to what he can observe naturally? Is he able to influence those thoughts if you haven't invited him in? What does that invitation even mean? What, like a vampire? Uh, I was... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Okay, maybe that's where that came Basically, from. Basically, every time you <laughs> masturbate, the devil has free reign. Or every time he hears you Congress. cuss, we'll you have free reign. We'll call it Congress reign. with yeah. Satan. Uh, and, and our... Is, is, that, is that when Satan kills a kitten? <laughs> Perhaps, perhaps, uh, but our you know, our unrepentant sins even enough right there to allow the mind rape of the dark one. Oh, whoa, mind rape! Mm. Yes, Congress I, I, involves I, consent, <laughs> right? So I guess mind rape is just. So I guess what it really comes down to is they're they're debating about whether or not Satan needs explicit consent, or if implied consent is enough. Well, if that were the case, then they wouldn't be able to go around calling all atheists Satan worshippers because most atheists do not go out and say, Hail Satan! Or do we? Or do we? Dun, dun, dun. And yes, I actually thought about and worried about all of these things. But the Poor, worst thing, confused little boy. But the worst thing that Satan did to me, or more accurately, the fear of Satan did to me, was make me doubt my doubt. Even when I was pretty certain that Christianity was bullshit... And I wasn't sure if there was a God. There was still a part of me that worried that it was all Satan just trying to get me off of God's path. Get you off. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Sorry. Serious moment there. But when it really comes down to it, when you look at the power that Christians assign to Satan, it almost seems like Satan is more powerful than God. Because anytime you're down on your luck, things aren't going your way, you're not happy, it's it's the devil trying to get you, and God just lets him do it. Yeah. Yeah, Christianity, when it really comes down to it, it's the fear of Satan. But that's not what it used to be. That's fairly new. How new would you say that is? I would say that's a, probably about 2nd century CE. Oh, okay. Yeah, it dates all the way back. Uh, the you know cr- uh, self-flagellation, uh, beating p- yourself. Yeah. That was a crazy uh, <laughs> masturbation. <laughs> that was a a process that was created to try to drive the evil out of you. Not necessarily Satan being involved, uh, but. Christians throughout the ages, the, the Dark Ages, one of the biggest things there, one of the reasons it was so dark was how powerful the fear of Satan was. Uh, burning witches was because they were afraid of the devil. If you lost in a war, God wasn't on your side, the devil was was able to get to you. It, it, yeah, it's been, yeah, yeah, it kind of comes and goes as to how much people uh, obsess with the devil. We're in kind of we're on the, the drawing down of a major period with the satanic panic of, of the 1980s. Uh, but I don't know. If you want proof that the, the Satan exists, just look at how many delegates Trump won last night. <laughs> yeah. And I, I really wouldn't be surprised if we get continued uh, obsession with, with the devil, with the current uh, Satanist movement. Not with Satanists being obsessed with the devil, but with Satanists making Christians fear the devil even more. Yeah, I can definitely see a little bit, bit of that. I mean, most of the ones that I know are guilty of of just trying to fan the flames of... Oh, sorry, <laughs> Rocco was was not happy with the way I moved my arm. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to take our first break, and then we'll be back with history. Hail okay. Satan. Atheist Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low-price, full-featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A-R-C-H-W-A-Y hosting.com. Hey, we're also brought to you by listeners just like you. 
find out how you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash atheist nomads. That's P A T R E O N dot com forward slash atheist nomads. This day in history, March 3rd, the year starting with 18, 1836. Texas formally signs a declaration of independence from Mexico. So, uh, yeah, due to some uh, glitches, misspellings, uh, stupid crap like that, um, <laughs> it, it was it was actually signed on the third, though they declared their independence uh, on March second. So, I'm still kind of claiming this one. Okay. Uh, anyways, yeah, uh, March third. So, um, what goes along with this? Yeah, um, during the Texas Revolution, uh, convention of American Texans met at Washington on the Brazos, 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 uh, declared the independence of Texas from Mexico on, on the second, like I was mentioning. Uh, the delegates chose David Burnett as the provincial president and confirmed Sam Houston as the commander in chief of all Texan forces. Uh, the Texans also adopted a constitution that uh, unfortunately protected the free practice of slavery, which had been prohibited by Mexican law. So, uh, yeah, those uh, good old fashioned Mexicans were yeah, a little bit uh, more better. Progressive. Good, progressive. Yeah, like good, good word. Thank you. Perfect <laughs> word, even. Um, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> took quite a while, but uh, yeah, uh, Texas uh, did. Uh, uh, did so yeah, uh, Texas sought the annexation by the United States, but uh, both uh, Mexico and the anti-slavery forces in the United States opposed its admission into the Union. So <laughs> for nearly a decade, Texas existed as like a, its own little independent republic island. And uh, uh, Sam Houston, he he actually became Texas his uh, first elected president. And in 1845, Texas joined the Union as the 28th state, leading to the outbreak of the Mexican-American War. So, yeah. Were they forced to give up slavery at that point? Uh, Yes, uh, but that didn't last too much longer because of uh, Civil War. Yeah. Uh, The United States Civil War. Yeah. That that one. Yeah, so they, they had slavery for another, you know, 20 12 15 uh, years 15 okay 15 yeah those the 20, good old days yeah, in texas yeah, 1860 1865 was about the time the civil war was done so yeah yeah about that yeah hooray yeah <laughs> a break away from mexico so you know among other things they could keep slavery yeah great this day in history 1904 dr seuss a.k.a. Theodore Geisel, was born. And this is a guy that, you know, just warmed my, warmed my cockles. I mean, just, whoa. God damn it. Ah, mute, mute, mute. There we go. Okay. Was that you or me? That was me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, which tab was that? <laughs> that <too? laughs> oh, shit. Okay. So this day in history, the year 1904, Dr. Seuss, a.k.a. Theodore Geisel was born. So this is a guy that, you know, just I I grew up with, and I'm sure like so many other people did. All of his books were just freaking amazing. Uh Cat in the Hat, The Lorax, Oh, the Places You'll Go, you know, everything. Yertle the Turtle. I'm Yertle the Turtle. Oh marvelous me, for I am the ruler of all that I see. You know, just fun stuff. I mean who didn't grow up with green eggs and ham? This guy is, he was just amazing and, you know, definitely sad that he died, but he sure left a hell of an indelible mark on the world. Mm-hmm. How about you guys? Did you grow up reading any of these, any of his books? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. My mom was actually, uh, her name's Sandy, but dad, her dad called her Sam. So green eggs and ham was always, uh, <laughs> her favorite book. Nice. Yeah. My, gr- my grandparents had a couple of, uh, Dr. Seuss books. That I would sit and read over and over and over and over again. <laughs> I, I have some of those now. Yeah, in fact, they're right there. There's yep. a locket in my pocket. <laughs> I do not question what the locket is, but it's in this pocket, apparently. 
Yeah, I mean, from him, I I moved on to you know other other poets like uh, Ogden Nash, amazing uh, American poet that used to make stuff that shouldn't rhyme rhyme. It's just loved it. Oh, but uh, anyways, yeah, uh, Mr. Yeah. Geisel there, he died in uh, uh, 1991 at the age of 87, so he had a pretty good stretch there. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite quotes from him is. Mm. I think it's, uh, I'm probably going to slaughter this, but uh, be who you are and say what you think because those who matter don't care and those who care don't matter. Mm. Wow. This day in history, 1915, the NACA, the predecessor of NASA, is founded. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, NACA is the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. Uh, and they were founded to undertake, promote, and institutionalize aeronautic research. Uh, it wasn't until 1958 that the agency was uh, dissolved and pretty much instantly, uh, everything was pretty much instantly shifted over to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. But uh, during their time, the NACA was actually very, uh, very important uh, de uh developing stuff like uh ducting and uh, which has a lot of uh current uh, modern automotive applications or cowling or airfoils which are still used in aircraft manufacture mm -hmm. uh, during world war ii naca was described as the force behind our air supremacy due to its key role in producing working superchargers for uh high-speed air high altitude uh, bombers um, so yeah i mean man superchargers are pretty badass anyways but oh uh, hell yeah i mean hell of a way to push you back in your seat but um <laughs> anyways um uh, yeah this some pretty fucking cool pretty cool shit you should look these guys up i mean they had a lot to do with the uh uh producing the cutting edge wing profile that the p51 muscadang uses hmm. used so you know anyways yeah there's some really fucking smart people nice hmm anyways anyways uh, uh <sighs> moving on along uh this one's short and sweet kind of so Moving on along, this day in history, 1929, Congress passes the Jones Act. So you might have heard of this little thing called prohibition. And uh, mm. yeah, lovely thing that it was. Uh, you know, I believe it was eight, uh, 1920 when the 18th Amendment went into effect. Uh, but, you know, that really didn't have any teeth. So Congress passed the Jones Act, which... Uh, basically strengthen the federal pe uh, penalties for bootlegging. Uh, but of course it only took like five years before the country ended up rejecting prohibition, repealing the 18th amendment and dealing with all of the uh, underground uh, crime that they have pretty much caused, which sprung up just about overnight when uh, mm -hmm. prohibition went into effect. And invented yeah. drag racing. Yeah. <laughs> and I uh, drank in your uh, honor. Well, pretty much NASCAR. Yeah. Um, Not NASCAR's honor, the repeal of Prohibition's honor. Oh, no. Uh, Lauren was saying about... Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. No, I said the I, I drink in my in your honor. I had to clarify whose honor. Nah. What's honor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe a lot of those early bootleggers and their, like, super su uh, supercharged cars, they all went into racing like she was saying mm -hmm. <laughs> and the ones who didn't uh found other illegal activities <laughs> oh good times and the mob was born <laughs> well not really born but really well, fucking strengthened yes yes yeah <laughs> and then the italians and irish became cops <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm sure they had nothing to do with like hiding any crimes Ever. <laughs> and then black people and Asians and Mexicans started forming gangs and soon, if we're lucky, they'll be cops. 
Ja. Ja. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh boy. So, moving along. <clears throat> Excuse me. This day in history, the year 1938, oil is discovered in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, moving back a little backwards a little bit to 1936, uh, SoCal, which is a subsidiary of the California Arabian Standard Oil Company, uh, joined forces with the Texas Oil Company and formed Caltex in 1936. Uh, And these two companies uh, basically had uh, geologists surveying uh, large areas around around Saudi Arabia, and it was... uh, on on this day, the uh, dram number seven that they <laughs> they fucking found oil and mm. just forever changed everything in that area. The king uh, the king of of, uh, of Saudi Arabia, of course, didn't have to rely on fucking ties. Essentially, yeah, uh, you know, rely on receipts from pilgrimages. I mean, like really, I mean, until nineteen thirty eight, that's what the king kingdom fucking relied on holy it shit it wasn't a very old kingdom at that point oh uh, sure poor as fuck i'm guessing oh yeah yeah very poor <laughs> holy crap it was a bunch of bedouins yeah well rich fucking bedouins now mm-hmm, mm-hmm. definitely but yeah uh you know they they sure as hell had to really uh drill like fuck uh of course, cave-ins, broken bits, you know, standard drilling shit, but they had to drill a lot deeper than usual. And yeah, this, this was the, the first strike in the area that just really changed everything. Mm-hmm. Huh. Anyways, yeah, that's pretty much it. Not much to that one. All right. Unless we get into lots of politics. But anyways, yeah, uh... Uh, basically, modern day Dahran. Dahran. Hmm. Very cool. Hmm. Eh, we can cut that one. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with science. Yay! We love hearing from our listeners. You can email us at contact at atheistnomads.com, tweet us at atheistnomads, send us a message on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash atheistnomads. Or better yet, call us and leave us a message at 541-203-0666. We might even play it on the show. You can also help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcast directory of choice. All right, we are back. And uh, for science, I'll be taking the lead on this. Since uh, Lauren's been uh, kind of hit or miss recently. Yay, meds! Yay! <laughs> uh, scientists have found a fossil of a 520 million year old crustacean like creature in South China with a mostly intact uh, nervous system. And this is the oldest example of a nervous system and. It has a rope-like cord heading from the head down to the end of the body with visible bead-like nerve clusters. It also has ganglia along it going to the 80-some-odd limbs. And what makes this find so extraordinary uh, was the paleontologists were able to distinguish individual nerve cells, some of which were more than 10 times thinner than a human hair. These nerve extensions along the nervous system are seen only nowadays in velvet and penis worms. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, you said that correctly. <laughs> Most arthropods lost... They're not velvet and penis. It's one, one's a velvet worm and yes. one's a penis worm, by the way. And penis worms are the most terrifying thing in the world. I want to see a velvet penis worm. Um, well, you can imagine what its nervous system looks like. Oh. Most arthropods have lost most of their nerves over time. Yeah, they usually just have the one that goes, the one spinal cord goes all the way down the body with a few going at the top where the legs are, but versus velvet and penis worms, which have little legs going all the way down their bodies. (laughs) 
Yes. Uh, those of you watching the video can see me being very uncomfortable right now. <laughs> Penis worms. <laughs> yeah, Lauren added that bit to my notes. Well, just wanted to specify uh-huh. that most arthropods don't have that kind of nervous system anymore. Yeah. It seems to have gone the gone down the wayside of evolutionary uh, not favoritism. <laughs> All right, and we have yet to talk about the Zika virus, but at this point it's been found in 40 countries, is fairly solidly linked to microencephalopathy, it's tentatively linked to Guillain-Barr syndrome, and it has also been found to probably be transmitted sexually. I use, I'm using all these vague and uncertain terms because... The microencephalopathy has only been known for a few months. The sexually transmitted possibility, it's never been shown to actually be sexually transmitted, but they have found it present in a British man's sperm for several months after infection. Uh, The Guillain-Barr syndrome link was just recently found in a Pacific island in Tahiti. Uh, And despite the fact that Zika has been known since the 50s, it wasn't really thought of as a, a really much of a thing until it all of a sudden started causing these huge pockets of probably causing these huge pockets of microencephalopathy in Brazil. Which, by the way, is when a baby is born with a tiny head. Usually, the yeah. back part of the head slopes down, and there's not much brain, and there they don't usually survive very long. And if they do, it's well worse. Yeah, watch and, the uh, movie. Watch the movie Todd Browning's Freaks, and you'll see some people with uh, microencephaly. That's right. Oh, that's right. They were in Freaks, weren't they? Yep. And then the Guillain Barr syndrome is a uh, form of paralysis. Yeah. Yeah, the paralysis. Autoimmune paralysis. So, yeah, these are pretty, um, for the low percentage of people who apparently have gotten these particular side effects, they're, they're absolutely devastating. Yeah. And especially when it's it's babies, because most ad- healthy adults that get it develop at worst cold or flu-like symptoms. Mm. That in mind, so far about 50 Americans living in the actual states have been infected while traveling abroad. And these are people who have been diagnosed as infected, uh, considering how slow well the delay between it moving and actually being identified in a place uh, realistically lauren and i may have picked it up in mexico come back home with it and never known probably not but (laughs) it would be enough that if lauren were to get pregnant uh it would be a really good idea to get tested for zika otherwise no concern Hmm. And thanks to the IUD, we don't really need to worry about that. Yay! And uh, but, no babies. But in Puerto Rico, uh, they are getting a lot more of this, and it is endemic there. And but it isn't known to be present in any mosquitoes within the continental U.S. And since there is no vaccine, and the vast majority of adults are asymptomatic or have common easy to misidentify symptoms treatment would be very difficult if even possible and for babies born with the microencephalopathy there is no treatment available that is permanent uh so this is is leaving the uh, u.s with having to develop a plan to try to prevent it from really taking hold and a few options are being considered uh one is a bacteria that can make transmission more difficult. And the other, more interesting one, is genetically modified mosquitoes designed to eliminate native populations of the offending mosquito species. And we have talked about uh, that concept uh, before. If they go the GM route, it will start with a trial in the Florida Keys using stock from a British company that has been found to reduce populations by about 90% in very short time periods. Yay! That is because the males, the genetically modified males, will outcompete the wild males, and when they mate with a wild female, 
the offspring don't make it to maturity. Yay! Mm-hmm. So they can't bite you. Yay! Uh, when we talked about that prospect before, I had some misgivings about it because you know, there's just the ethical concern of intentionally causing a extinction. An extinction? Yeah. Granted, I have no problem with doing that with smallpox or polio black people or malaria (laughs) too soon (laughs) fucker too soon Uh, (laughs) but that will actually come in in a little bit uh but uh, with the mosquitoes if you eliminate that one species there are still hundreds or thousands of species of mosquitoes present everywhere um this this species lives yeah it's, it's not a keystone species it's not like other species depend on this particular species of mosquito luckily otherwise yeah you would probably have some serious ethical mm-hmm. moral dilemmas about causing the massive extinction but it, and this species eh. is the Addis aegypti mosquito it is if you eliminate that yeah it, it won't really cause any effects on the food chain nothing noticeable other mosquitoes will take its place it's also known for carrying a bunch of other diseases that mm-hmm. we would love to get rid of, like a dengue fever. Which is what these these methods of abatement were developed for. And it's a lot better than traditional methods of, of mosquito abatement that we have used, like DDT, which is the environmental equivalent of burning your house down because of a spider. Hey, come on, it has no bad effects. <laughs> sure. Anyways. In small quantities sprayed under your skin... No problem. Yeah. In huge quantities sprayed dousing swamps with it, <laughs> you're going to wipe out a lot more insects than you want. It just reminds me of the picture of the um, spider web all over the fire extinguisher, and somebody was like, well, I guess the fucker's going to burn. <laughs> it's like, yeah, pretty much. Poor little yeah. spider. But what this really comes down to is whether or not the public is more afraid of genetic modification or the Zika virus. Uh, and Probably GM. And I, I, I think Zika. I think right now, more people would be afraid of genetic modification mm-hmm. because the only microencephalopathic babies have been black or brown. As soon as it's a white baby, I think people will want Zika gone. I hate to have to say it like that, but... Just look at the response to ISIS and Boko Haram. Boko Haram is more violent. It kills more people. It is a more disgusting, terrible organization. And nobody cares because they just kill black people. ISIS kills white people. Yeah, on occasion. Uh, Boko Haram is pretty much completely limited to uh, Africa, Central Africa. Yeah. Yeah, and Arabs are considered white. It's that that they're, they're considered that Caucasian scale. Is that brown scale? Yeah, but don't, they're 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 don't considered. Tell any, don't tell anybody in Alabama that. <laughs> yeah, if if you look on uh, uh, on like census forms, yeah, white is defined as people whose ancestors are from Europe, Central Asia, the Middle East, and North Africa. Hmm. Arabs. Okay. Yeah. And Bosnia, we, we knocked out the uh, the bad guys there when they were slaughtering white people. At the same time, there were bad guys in Rwanda slaughter, slaughtering ba- uh, black people, and nobody cared. Mm-hmm. Until Hotel Rwanda came out. Yeah. Was that Just Denzel Washington? No, that was not. And uh, But the uh, the pastor of the Milo Academy Church when I was in high school... At Milo, uh, he was the only American in Rwanda when the genocide was happening. He was the Adventist Development and Relief Director in, in the country, and he put his family on a plane, flew him back to the states, and he stayed and tried to save orphans. Mm. Yeah, it was. It, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, people will uh, try to take care of this this virus before it gets worse. I have a feeling that you're thinking of uh, Don Cheadle was the main character from Hotel Rwanda. Not the character, the person who played him. Uh, Paul Rusipinia. I mean, I know freaking Denzel Washington wasn't the person who was 
that it was portraying. I was I, trying I, to figure out the actor. I well, think, Don, Don Cheadle. Yeah, it wasn't. Denzel Washington wasn't in that. Denzel uh, you, wasn't. It was Don, uh, yeah, Don okay. Cheadle. You might be thinking of Man on Fire. Maybe. Otero maybe. Wanda's, but uh, 2004. I, yeah, that was like a TV special thing that I watched. Oh, okay. Hotel Rwanda? No. Well, basically, it was on TV, and so we watched it for like 10 minutes and then moved on to something else. Not No, oh. Man on Fire. Oh, oh okay. okay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do an update on the vaginal yeah. seating uh, article that we reported on a little while ago. Just to, so nasty. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nastier than penis worms? <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> It has been theorized that babies who are born from C-section are missing out on bacteria that babies who are born vaginally get from their mothers. Uh, This theory then lends to assumptions such as, is this why children who are born C-section are more prone to asthma, uh, allergies, etc., etc.? One of the ways that they want to try and fix this is by taking um, the fluids that are produced during labor... And spreading by the mother and and uh, spreading it on the baby right after it's born using um, a soaked uh, handkerchief or gauze pad. gauze pad or something like that. They uh, basically want to want rub it around the baby's eyes and mouth. Especially. Eyes, mouth. Anus. Yeah. yeah. Make sure the baby's covered in these, you know, supposedly positive bacteria. Sounds pretty cool. However, all of those assumptions were just that. They were kind of assumptions. And um, they, doctors have been forced to make to tell people that they can't have this particular thing done if they have diseases such as strep B, herpes, gonorrhea. Um, kind of makes sense, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, not, a, not only is it uh, uh, not only is it like uh, useless; it's harmful. Right. Well, potentially harmful. It's one of those risk versus benefit. Well, I mean, there's if, if somebody's got the herp, you know, then yeah. Well, they just might give that to their kid. In that case, you have definite risk. Yeah. Even without that, the risk of an infection that you don't know you have being spread to the baby, these doctors are saying outweighs any potential benefit of doing the wipes, which there is no evidence to say that it has any benefit, especially considering there's weak evidence that babies actually pick up bacteria, good beneficial bacteria during the birthing process. Yeah. So, um, so just a little bit of a back, whatever you call that on, on retraction, retraction on that one. Um, it really came down, it, it hit the news when one woman who had, who was positive for strep B insisted that they do this to her baby and they had to explain to her that actually strep B is one of the largest risks for birthing vaginally <laughs> and it's not good for the baby and it kind of got caught up in that. So that's where they, you, you, we saw this re- kind of retraction. It's uh, It's good to keep up on these things. Yeah. Well, and it's, it is worth noting that the, the whole risk versus benefit thing, you might think, oh, maybe C-sections are better than vaginal birth to reduce the risk of some of these infections spreading. No, that's not the case either because the risk of C-section, it like doubles or triples the risk of maternal or baby death compared to doing a vaginal birth. Yeah, it really is um, no other choice. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's like you got you have tear or you have bleeding or something oh we have to do a c-section and then you're you're down for the count for six months and it's yeah and and trying to do you know recover with this no no that's not the way to do it there is really good evidence that baby's gut bacteria get seeded from the mother's milk from the colostrum they have found not quite I, i haven't seen that they figured out how it actually works but found gut bacteria making it into milk some kind of, of pathway, probably the, the lymph, 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 or lymph system transporting it. It is time for another break, and then we'll be back with politics and religion. Uh, Lauren, will you be with us for that section? Uh, no, I will not be. I am coming down with a headache, and so okay. I shall be exiting. All right. Could... 
could I bother you to bring me a beer? And I will bring you a beer, my love. Oh. Are you sure you don't want a scotch? I want a scotch. If everybody will call in and 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 tell us, we'll start forcing Dustin to have scotch on these, and then he'll get wasted by the end. It'll be hilarious. Oh, wait. You'd also have yeah. to provide the scotch. <laughs> hey, fans of the show, send scotch. <laughs> As a listener of the show, I'm going to assume you love my sexy vocal stylings. If you love the rest of the show as much as my voice, consider giving us the resources we desperately need to purchase quality cocaine at Red Bull. We make it super easy to make a one-time donation or to support us on a per episode, monthly, or even annual basis using PayPal or Patreon. Find out more at AtheistNomads.com. Use the links on the right side of the page. A dollar an episode is all we ask. And we are back, and Wesley is way too big. Ah. Shrinking him down so that he actually fits on the screen. Trust me, 12 inches. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if anybody out there would like a mailing address, just let me know. And, you know, if, if you have any, <laughs> like, uh, alcohol you want me to sample or yeah, anything, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try it. Okay. Yeah. Especially beer. I love Belgians. Oh, yeah. Triples in particular. Oh, so good. <laughs> Maybe we can start. You know, like ah, a- I just spilled beer on myself. <gasps> Blasphemy. Start at like a, a little beer trading thing or something. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, we are go- time to get actually to uh, business here. Mm. Uh, the... I went ahead and extended the scope on the state legislative update to state governance because, you know, crazy people get elected to stuff in, at the state level, hopefully oh, yeah. not to president. Uh, so the, at state level, this is where some of the best and some of the worst people are at. Yeah. For example, uh, mm. a uh, creationist is headed to a runoff after narrowly missing the 50% needed to secure the seat that she is running for on the wait for it texas board of education oh, that really is a, an important spot too it really sucks unfortunately her creationism isn't what's scary about it or about her no she's fucking batshit she is an avid conspiracy theorist believes that the new world order is really in control that Obama worked as a gay prostitute in his 20s to pay for his drugs. That climate change is actually okay. a government conspiracy. Okay, but that one about Obama's true. Keep going. That teaching evolution is to blame for school shootings and a host of other insane things that is she, she is currently trying to scrub from the internet. <laughs> Unfortunately for her, and fortunately for us, if you ever try to make something disappear on the internet it's just going to go viral (laughs) like all of her batshit insane everything (laughs) yeah yeah texas school board that's some of the most important shit in the in the u.s though Mm -hmm. oh yeah texas is is like pretty much it's it's them in California that pretty much dictate what book school books the country's going to get. Yep. <laughs> and California is going to be doing what's right, actually following science and, and good educational standards. The likelihood of them going off something crazy is is slim. Texas, on the other hand, uh, we should have just left them as an independent country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that I was gonna include something about that. We should have like just never let them in. Mm-hmm. We could do without Texas. Uh, bringing it a little bit closer to home. Okay, like just down the street. <laughs> uh, we we talked about Idaho's uh, Senate Bill thirteen forty two last time, and this is the bill that would allow the Bible to be used as a reference in school. It is getting amended. The first change adds the words religious text including in front of the word Bible. And the second change is removing the hard sciences from the list of subjects. This basically means that the 
if this becomes law, you will be able to use the Bible in place and other religious texts in places where you can already use them. And it slightly decreases the risk of it losing in court. Actually, it greatly decreases the risk of it losing in court. There is no place for the Bible in hard sciences. And if you specifically just say the Bible, you are going to lose in court. I hope so. Okay. But I, I, I think the part of including was where they went wrong. They should have replaced the word Bible with religious texts. <laughs> if you name one, you need to name all of them. Kama Sutra. <laughs> Tennessee yeah. Senate Bill 1792 would allow the Association of Classical and Christian Schools to be a state-recognized accrediting body for church-sanctioned sa- schools. So far, does it sound too bad? Mm. Uh, but the bill was postponed after a state senator asked the bill's sponsor if he knew about the founder of the organization. <laughs> Douglas Wilson, pastor of the Christ Church in Moscow, Idaho, defends slavery as having been in the best interest of minorities. Obviously. Promotes exile of gay people. Mm. Executing adulterers. And allowing rapists to pay his victim's father to marry her. Sure, why not? Now, of course, the founder of an organization doesn't necessarily tell you much about the organization unless the organization has failed to officially repudiate that founder. Douglas Wilson is clearly not likely to do a good job of deciding whether or not a school is going to be providing a good education since he can't even figure out whether or not human beings are allowed to have basic rights. So, Doug Wilson, fuck you. Also, I'd like to add that, uh, how was it, like 2009, there was a, a small documentary made called uh, Collision, where Douglas Wilson debates Christopher Hitchens, mm. and Hitchens utterly destroys him. Even though <laughs> Douglas doesn't even fucking fathom it, he doesn't realize that he's just being getting torn apart with some weak ass weak. He brings weak sauce to the table. It's pretty bad. Nice, nice. Yeah. All right, and finally for this uh, insert in the the politics section mm. uh, on the Georgia State Senate floor, Emanuel Jones, a state senator. Who is black? Happens to be black. Yes. Had a tough question for the bill sponsor, Greg Kirk, who is white. Mm -hmm. So let's listen to their exchange. (laughs) We're all familiar with the terms KKK. Is that not correct? Meaning the hate organization, Ku Klux Klan. I've read about them. Yes. Some of my heritage have done a lot more than just read about them, and I certainly. I uh, understand where you're going, but my concern is, couldn't that organization, if it chose to do so, identify itself as faith-based? They do. And, and again, I'm not an attorney. I, I don't know. I, I guess they, w- they could, Senator. I'm not sure. Uh, Senator Further I don't know what would stop them. Senator Further Yield? Certainly. So there's nothing in your legislation that would stop them. Is that correct? That's right. Does that present a problem for you, Senator? Um, does it present a problem for me? No. Um, again, I, I mean, I've read about those groups, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know that this is, this, this certainly isn't directed towards them. It's directed towards churches and towards ministers and towards organizations that provide adoptions and organizations that provide help to the homeless and so forth. Senator for the year. It's for equal protection as well. Yes, sir. I heard you initially say the answer is being no. Uh, I, I would certainly hope that you would search your heart and understand how the gravity of dealing with an organization like the KKK, particularly for those of my persuasion, could create problems underneath the, uh, under this particular legislation. In Essentially, it would empower some of the things they would do by discriminating against certain classes of people inheriting your legislation. 
Aren't you providing a vehicle for them to do exactly that? Yup. <clears throat> I don't. I don't think so, Senator. I really don't. And uh, you know, I did watch the Super Bowl the other day, and I did see a tribute to the Black Panthers. I guess that'd be kind of the similar group that we're talking about. Um, and I guess they could fall under this as well. Oh, wait, hold up. The the Black Panthers uh, just wanted an equal opportunity to open carry to have weapons, just like every other white person out there. Yeah. Holy shit. Uh, it was it's so awesome to see somebody call out a bill like this with yeah. the KKK in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. I'm sorry this football thing's still irking me. <laughs> I mean, this I mean, apparently this is the first time that the United States noticed that Beyoncé's black. Mhm. Mm yeah, before that she was so white or you know deeply suntanned or something because she wasn't black but you know she you know puts on it a, a really good presentation really good show and like oh wait black panthers what <gasps> cops you know and then everybody loses their shit i don't know i, I actually missed that part of the halftime show i wasn't paying all that close of attention and had uh pizza that i was having to take care of <laughs> still oh my goodness still funny yeah Anyways, uh, yeah, uh, Georgia Senator getting his, yeah, getting his words tossed back at him. This is awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and keeping on the theme of religion, racism in the South, uh, most, if not all, Adventist colleges and universities have mandatory worship service attendance with varying ways of administering that. Uh, at, at Walla Walla, you had to turn in attendance slips to somebody at qualifying events to get credit. And freshmen had to have three worship credits a week. And there was an option every night to get that credit. Uh, Sabbath church service attendance is usually handled separately. And I know like in the say, case of Walla Walla, completely voluntary. In the case of Southern, uh, they just kick you out of the dorm but you don't have to actually go to church. Uh, one of those, you don't have to go to church, but you can't stay here type of deals. <laughs> and, uh, but they do include their Friday night Vesper service as an option to get that worship credit. Anyway, last week's Vespers were put on by the Black Christian Union and was commemorating Black History Month. Several students took to Yik Yak an anonymous social media app that allows you to chat with people within five miles of your location to say things like, so glad Black Vespers is over. <laughs> Why? Too hot in there. Loud. Like, WTF. Didn't you listen to Vespers? There's no black or white in God, God's eyes, but only children. Shut up and go eat bananas. Right. Shovel, LOL. Fits you well. Go dig a hole. Some plants need some, some ground and labor. Other ones, uh, the balcony is so crazy. Is this how black churches act? Calm down. We're in church, not in the park. <laughs> Negro people don't want to be considered different than whites, but they go around saying they have their own national anthem. So drums in the church are okay now since it's BCU Vespers, right? The nigger tea... Yes, nigger, no, nigger turry is real tonight. Nigger tree. Nigger tree. I'm going to say There's too many R's. <laughs> I, I think it's somebody who, who can't talk as well as right. Well, yeah. And apparently you can vote up and down on these. Oh, uh, great. Nigger turry got voted down one. Eh. Drums in the church got voted up twice, and so glad Black, Black Vespers is over got voted up twice. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, fortunately, oh, there, there was so much more going on on this, this app that I don't think I'd even heard of before that. Uh, but uh, university administration has condemned the racist remarks. 
but holy know. shit <laughs> well that's the shit that pops out when people think they're anonymous mm-hmm. yeah. just wait <laughs> people are gonna find ways to discover who's saying what no. yeah well and i i've been to a lot of white adventist churches uh very very few allow instruments other than the piano and organ during the church service uh there's a few that will allow things like flutes and violins very few will allow guitars and the church i grew up in i i played guitar and bass in the church band wow uh i progressive visited some churches where i played bass in a band while we either performed or helped lead the the music service uh but most would not allow drums or guitars or other devil's instruments but black churches pretty much all have and okay i've only been to two black churches one was adventist one was baptist uh Drums are very, very common in black churches. Not really seeing a problem. I mean, that yeah. seems like a an instrument that they grew up with. Mm-hmm. And I don't if, know. Culturally, I see a lot of drums coming from Africa and fr- from uh, black culture. I'm seeing a lot of uh, string instruments like guitars and and shit like that from like, Europe. Pianos have strings. Again, I still yeah. think of that as a, like a <laughs> European uh-huh. thing. I yeah. You can make a drum out of anything. And if you are poor or you're on the, the plantation, if you've got a wash bin, you've got a drum. Fucking A. It, it makes sense. And, you know, when I was in black churches, I was uncomfortable because the service was unrecognizable to me. There was so much movement. Uh, people were really into it. They were enjoying themselves. Oh yeah. There's it's night and day, between, uh, between black <laughs> churches and white churches. Yeah. Holy shit. Uh, I, people have fun I in black to, churches. They don't in white oh churches. God, yes. Fun. That's the thing. Seriously. Whenever I went to a black church growing up, I knew I was at least going to have some fucking amazing food at the end. Potlucks. Mm-hmm. White church potlucks. So you're, you're getting all this, you know, nasty watered down shit. Doesn't taste good. Oh, white Adventist potluck. Yeah. It's seeing who can make the best either vegetarian casserole oh, no. or if it's a really conservative church who can make the best fake cheese no <laughs> all right moving along yes moving along albert voss is a retired physics teacher and atheist from germany who lives in a predominantly catholic region he recently started putting up bumper stickers on his car a few of them read the church is looking for modern advertising ideas i can help Jesus, our favorite artist, hanging for 2,000 years, and he still hasn't gotten got cramp. Let's make a pilgrimage to Martin Luther to Rome. Kill Pope Francis. The Reformation is cool. I am sure they are a lot better in German. <laughs> a uh, local Catholic was offended and called the police, which led to his driver's license being suspended, his car impounded, and a fine of 500 euros. Damn. The court ruling was that the bumper stickers defamed religion and were in violation of the country's blasphemy laws, which only apply if the blasphemy is capable of disturbing the peace. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm afraid of stuff like this in Ireland, too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man. Uh, Pretty much any religious bumper sticker is going to offend another person from a, another religion. So, yeah, I, I think the judge is probably kind of playing favorites here. Or the police, you know, you know actually writing up charges and yep. prosecuting this. I, I think there's a little bit of favorit- favoritism going on. 
one person's statement of belief is another person's blasphemy. Exactly. So you're going to piss somebody off somewhere. And what's really terrifying about this is Muslims. Yeah. Germany has a rising Muslim population, especially with the refugees right now. And Muslims tend to be more sensitive to what they perceive as blasphemy. And if the country's blasphemy laws have the standard of whether or not it's capable of disturbing the peace, then all that means is an offended Muslim threatening to commit violence as a result of it means it was illegal blasphemy. That's all it takes is one overreaction if you have a standard like that. And if bumper stickers are enough to prompt a conviction, holy shit. (sighs) Moving along. Yeah. uh, During a question and answer session, David... Bednar, a member of the Mormon Church's Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, took a question about homosexuality. Before I play the audio for you, I need to point out that I cut it short, since he is quite long-winded. He had a translator, so he was not following a normal cadence, and the translator cut him off a few times, so the ends of a few of his words are missing. Since I cut the translator out, since this is an English-language podcast... Not Spanish. You also mentioned that he is a a member of the Quorum of the Twelve, which means that he's essentially one of the Twelve leaders of Mormonism. Yeah. One step below the First Presidency, which has several members. It's it's a weird hierarchy up there. Yeah. But still, I mean, he's one of the church leaders. Oh, yeah. He's one of the top, top dudes. Yeah. How can homosexual members of the church live and remain steadfast in the gospel? First, I want to change the question. (laughs) There are no homosexual members of the church. We are not defined by sexual attraction. We are not defined by sexual behavior. We are sons and daughters of God. And all of us have different challenges in the flesh. There are many different types of challenges. The reason I began my answer as I did is that in this question, the word homosexual was used to describe or label a member of the church. It's an inaccurate label. We are sons and daughters of God, and we determine how we respond to the variety of challenges that we face in mortality through the proper exercise of our moral agents. Yeah, there was some serious getting cut off there uh sorry about that but uh, some of the areas I, I cut out included him talking about how morally weak beautiful people are how there was one point where he was uh talking about how terrible it'd be to have a physical handicap as a, a challenge And there was one point when he's waving around his water bottle talking about how his wife was afraid he was going to hit her with it. (laughs) Yeah. uh, First and foremost, this guy's an asshole. Mm -hmm. I mean, God damn. I mean, he's basically saying that uh, homosexual people are handicapped. They're not fully functional. And that is some of the weirdest shit ever. I mean, it seems it seems like every religious person ever does not realize that there are so many homosexual uh animals out in the world uh and it, it, this uh, homosexual people homosexual animals all all around the fucking globe are fucking natural i mean it just happens mm-hmm. nothing bad nothing wrong with it at all it's natural Get the fuck over it. Yeah. This is... Yeah, he was saying that the church's expectation is that if you are gay, you don't act on it. That you will either be celibate or you will go ahead and suck it up and marry somebody of the opposite sex. Yeah, suck it up. Asking somebody to 
deny who they are and expect them to partner with, marry, whatever. No, actually all of those things and produce children with somebody they are not attracted to. That is a recipe for a miserable, shitty life. I'm straight. I can't if, think of anything worse. Really. If I was forced to marry a man, that would suck. Yeah. At least, you know, two or three times a week. I would not be happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But he would be perfectly happy to force, force gays and lesbians to marry people of the opposite sex or to deny them one of the basic human needs. Yeah, isn't that great? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I, I got nothing. This this guy's just such an asshole all the way around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. He just looks like a prick, too. God. Mm. All yeah, right. And if, you, went there. if you think he's bad. Mm-hmm. While their prophet, Warren Jeffs, remains in prison for sexually assaulting his child brides. Sure. Yes, brides. Oh, yeah. The top leaders of what remains of his fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints along the Utah-Arizona border, including his brothers Lyle and Seth, have been arrested on federal charges of food stamp fraud and money laundering. This is awesome. First of all, mm -hmm. you know... <laughs> These are all white people, of course. Yes. And, you know, food stamp fraud. If, if this happened to any, any other race than, than these nice uh, white and delights and people, they would just be <laughs> fucking going out of their minds, just saying exactly what they're, what these people are charged with. Oh, look at this fraud. Look at all these evil fucking people. But no, since, you know, they're, they're good church going people that, you know, it, it's okay. Especially because, well, the the Mormons and especially the FLDS really has problems with the gover the government in in any case. Mm -hmm. Holy shit! What the fuck? Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> this kind of reminds me of, of like um, back in the day when they were taking out mob bosses. Like uh, they get them on like tax evasion and just stupid shit, just to break their break them up. And I fucking love love this too. Oh yeah. This is even more terrifying uh, considering how many uh, how many uh, uh, de delegates Donald Trump won, but he has a shot at being our next president. Terrifying shot, especially if Hillary wins the Democratic nomination. Uh, but let's let's go ahead and listen to something he said while the media was being distracted by Chris Christie's endorsement. Christianity is under siege. Every year, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker. And I had a meeting with various ministers and pastors about two months ago. And I'm pretty good at figuring things out. And I sat with them. And some of them said, we love you. We want to endorse you so badly. But we're afraid we're going to lose, if we do that, our tax-exempt status. And I said, what's this all about? That takes you, and it makes you less powerful than a man or woman walking up and down the street. You actually have less power. And yet, if you look at it, I was talking to some, we probably have 250 million, maybe even more, in terms of people. So we have more, we have more Christians, think of this, then we have men or women in our country and we don't have a lobby because they're afraid to have a lobby because they don't want to lose their tax status. So I am going to work like hell to get rid of that prohibition and we're going to have the strongest Christian lobby and it's going to happen and it's going to happen. This took place during the presidency of Lyndon Johnson, and it has had a terrible, chilling effect. When I said that there has to be a temporary ban 
on certain people coming into this country. We have no choice. There's something wrong. There's something really wrong. And when I said Muslim, I was met with furor. If I would have said Christian, people would have said, oh, we can't do anything about it. That's going to end, folks. We're going to say Merry Christmas now on Christmas. Yeah, uh, churches, they are free to say whatever the fuck they want as long as they give up their tax exempt status. Yeah. So that should be Donald Trump's policy. You want to say whatever you want? You want to endorse whatever candidate you want? It? Fine. Fuck it. Give out your tax policy. But no, he wants to just fucking. Oh, God. What is the, the actual code called? Um, but anyways, uh, 501c3. Yes. Thank you. He, he wants to take that away and just it actually it's probably different than 501c3, but something along those lines. Yes. Yeah, so that. Yeah. He wants them to have their tax exempt and and eat their cake, too. Mm hmm. No, no. Now, what's the scariest thing with Trump is if you look at his past and the things he said and compare that with what he's saying now, it is difficult to tell did he change his mind and get crazier or is he just saying whatever he thinks will get him votes? Oh, totally. I mean, I think that's why he didn't want to disavow uh, any dealings with or uh, any, any uh, good words that David Duke put out for him. Mm -hmm. uh, David Duke, the former Grand Dragon of the KKK, I believe it was, and yeah. governor yeah. of Alabama. But uh, Was he governor? I believe he was governor before he ran for governor or senator, I forget, uh, before he ran for presidency a couple times. Member of the Louisiana House of Representatives. Okay, that's what it was. Thank you. Uh, yes, I remember that he had to get, he got elected to a position. Okay, fuck. Um, yes. Uh, and <laughs> there's actually been quite a bit of fallout from, from this whole, I mean, to take it away from this story, really, but there's been a lot of fallout from uh, him not uh, speaking mm -hmm. out against uh uh, shit shit on me uh david duke. david duke yeah uh scarborough's uh on msnbc he's been like uh trump's biggest fanboy and, and cheerleader all this time and you know he uh apparently well scarborough kind of have a little bit of a meltdown and it's like no this is t a bridge too far and finally said that he you know he didn't like trump anymore which is weird as fuck mm-hmm I don't know. It seems like everybody's turning on, on Trump these last few days here, which is nice, but still weird. It's nice, but it's not affecting his poll. No, uh, no. His, his standing the polls. Of course not. Yeah. No. So apparently everybody who's turning against him doesn't matter. Well, everybody that's turning against him are, is pretty much everybody that was fucking egging him on. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, oh, but man, if he actually goes through with any of the things he says, we are in for a really shitty time. Well, if anybody on the right gets elected, I mean, it's pretty much either uh, Cruz or Trump now, but mm -hmm. yeah, um, it, 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 it's not good either way. And I don't think Cruz is, you know, Cruz isn't it's much either, less scary than Trump. Yeah, I know, but uh, Rubio's basically out. Carson's mm -hmm. gone. Uh, anybody else is just pathetic after that. Yeah, Kasich. Uh, Kate, yeah, he's he's not even a, a joke anymore. Uh, yeah. It's pretty much just Cruz or Trump, and ni neither are... are, are ni I don't know. I mean, I, I think Cruz is honestly just kind of evil, and he has that weird baby face thing that just bothers me anyways. But uh, Trump, man, also he's evil, evil, but just hit or miss, just really weird. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't pin him down on anything, really. So, I mean, he, I'm sure he's going to fuck shit up everywhere, but it's going to 
I don't know. I mean, he just doesn't really have a good structure on any anything that he's trying to to pimp. Yeah. Oof. Anyways, goodness. Ah, fuck. All right, we are <laughs> are long. So okay, uh, yes, we are. Let's move on to feedback uh, right. and supporters. We're gonna just lump this all in together since we don't have any new supporters. But we and the only announcement. Feed- the only feedback we got was from Travis McGee. Hey. So let me go ahead and play that for you. All right. Hello, Travis McGee from Oklahoma here, and I have a special challenge for all the listeners. Dustin has a need for some new audio interface equipment to allow a third mic set up for more in-studio guests. He has the rest of equipment but uh, lacks the equipment to connect it to his computer. Mm. So in order to make this happen, for the month of March, I'm throwing out a challenge. I will match all new patronage and PayPal donations up to $100. The more we raise, the higher the quality and the better the show will sound. So who's with me? Fucking hey, Travis. Hell yeah. Yeah, now he he watched the studio tour I did. Ah. And I mentioned that I, you know, showed my my interface that I have and how I I would like a a new one. As you all know, money is tight right now with Lauren not working, but I have a art tube MP that is sitting doing nothing. Mm -hmm. I have microphones that are sitting doing nothing. I have a spot on my Behringer Autocom Pro that has (laughs) a compressor, limiter, noise gate, all of that. One of the two spots on that is doing nothing. Oh, The only thing I am missing is that input to get into the computer. And yeah, if we can get money in from, from you, our, our awesome listeners, I can get another mic set up for getting more guests in studio. Uh, there are lots of good people here in crazy Idaho that would be (laughs) awesome to talk to. And it'd be a lot easier to get them in, especially since a lot of them, uh, like Lauren more than me, if she can be in on it too, and oh man it'd be nice it'd be nice you guys could all make me really happy all right so everybody please uh sign up just like you're saying month of march uh you know if you've been wanting to kick in for a while go ahead do it this is the perfect time double your money by doing this so you know Mm -hmm. help us out and yeah much appreciated what can i yeah and uh on that note uh we're done. Uh, you can always email us at contact at atheistnomads.com. Call us at 541-203-0666. Leave us a review on iTunes. If you can figure out how, leave us a review on Stitcher and let us know. Uh, and yeah, give us money so I can get a new interface and we can eat and drink and be happy. And you know what? There's no uh, specific time of year you know it's not christmas it's not anything like that but you know what if you got some amazon shopping to do use a little click through on our site you know it helps us out a lot and you know you'll feel good yeah. and we'll get a couple bucks out of it a lot of you are getting tax returns oh yeah fucking a. i'm not i have to to pay the irs but you want that that really nice shiny new 4k tv that's on the cheap on amazon yeah use uh-huh. the click through or to make you know <laughs> Let, let's go with the tithe number. 10% of that uh, become 20 to help buy me a, a new interface. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. So uh, enough begging. Uh, yep. Thank you so much, guys, for listening. And we will be back in a week. That's right. With, with an interview. interview with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you got suggestions, yeah. email me really quick. <laughs> <Wesley> <laughs> at com. <laughs> Seriously, quick. All right. (laughs) Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find show notes and contact information at atheistnomads.com. Follow us on Twitter at Atheist Nomads. And like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Atheist Nomads. Please subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcatcher of choice. And while you're there, feel free to leave us a review. Theme music is courtesy of Sturdy Fred. Until next time, this has been The Atheist Nomads. Stopping video.
All right. Stopping other recording soon when I get to it. Oh.